Hi everyone, today I would like to share with you the unboxing of this 1080p HDMI hardware based encoder. It's by Uray Tech, uh, model number UHE265-1L. And it supports compression types like uh, H.264, H.265, and MJPEG. And the unit can do streaming in protocols like uh, UDP multicasting, HLS, that's uh, HTTP live streaming, uh, Flash, although Flash might be extinct now, Transport Stream, RTMP, if you want to send to YouTube and Facebook, or any other custom RTMP server. It can also do RTSP streaming. So let's head on over to the unboxing. So here you have a flash drive with instructional videos. It's mainly desktop captures, which is very helpful. It shows you how to configure the unit. Uh, here is tech support contact information, product manual, product catalog of other similar products from this manufacturer. On the right here, we have a 12 volt DC adapter and the actual unit itself. Uh, the unit is encased in a metal housing and it uses convectional cooling so there is no fans in the unit uh, looking at the back is your 12 volt dc in and the other side is your audio in analog audio in hdmi in and out factory reset and a one gigabit ethernet connection now this unit is hdcp compliant so if you're hooking up a monitor to the hdmi out make sure it's not a dvi monitor that uses a cable like this because uh you, you, it's not going to work it's going to say no signal on your screen so just a heads up for that uh, how about we go ahead and, and log into the unit now and see what the menu items look like so the default IP address is 192.168.1.168. Uh, it's a little different here because I went ahead and changed it already. The default login is admin admin, and that'll take you straight to this page you're looking at. And uh, as you can see here, here's a brief status of what's happening on the unit, CPU usage, temperature, it is connected to the, to the internet, and uh, there is a 1080p source hooked up on it as well. Uh, let's move over to the mainstream section so here i have four active streams that, that are uh, going on on the unit at the moment transport rtsp uh, i have an rtmp going out to youtube at the moment as well and a multicast udp stream so here's where you would copy and paste your this url into the respective player so i would use vlc for example to play this multicast stream so moving over to the encoder side let's drill down into that and uh, see what it looks like so here's the settings for my mainstream you're going to be seeing a video shortly and uh, that's going to be an rtsp stream and this is this is the these are the settings that that you're going to be seeing the video on so here's where you put in your uh, YouTube streaming information or Facebook. So let's move over to the other item, Substream 1. It's basically the same thing, but with uh, smaller resolutions as you go down. Uh, moving over to video, nothing much there. Audio, uh, you do have the ability to select either HDMI embedded audio or analog in. Unfortunately, you're not able to use both at the same time. Here's what the uh, sampling rate options are, and quarter options, and uh, moving over to the advanced section. Now, I don't think you would ever really need to touch this area. Let's head over to OSD, and uh, this is where you do your watermarking and so on. Here I'm using uh, zones three and four. I have welcome to the 2020 conference as a text output and I can position a text anywhere in the screen using this X and Y axis and uh, moving over to zone 4 you can upload a, a BMP image or PNG and um, just just make sure it follows this naming convention here any other name you give the, your files and uh, the unit wouldn't take it it wouldn't display on your stream and to control the transparency of, of uh, your watermarking you would do that from up here so the higher you go uh, the 
the, the, the less transparent the image is. Uh, let's move over to system. Here's your LAN settings, NTP. I went ahead and used an external NTP server because I, I wanted the unit to pull the current time whenever it powers up and I, I didn't want to have to worry about that. So uh, let's move over to the video section now. Uh, but before we do so, how about we talk a little bit about the streaming setup. So let's go back to the uh, YouTube setup here, slide and pull that info up for you so uh, with traditional software based encoders normally you would enter your url your streaming key and so on you would enter those in different boxes but on this hardware of course you're doing everything in one so what what you would do here is as you can see this is your publishing URL over here. You would enter that first in the box, like so. And then you would append your streaming key to the tail end of that publishing URL. So, you, so just make sure that you have a forward slash separating your streaming key from your publishing URL. If you had to use a username and password in addition to a streaming key, then this is the format you would follow at the bottom here. So let's uh, let's move over to a to the YouTube actual YouTube uh, stream that I have running. Let me pull that screen up for you. And here it is. So what you're looking at here is, uh, is, is an actual stream uh, being fed to YouTube. And that page I was, I was showing you a few seconds ago, you can see it up there. And there's about a 30 second, uh, 30 second delay usually. So it took a while to change to uh, what you're looking at here right now. This uh, warning they're showing up here, the stream's current bitrate uh, is lower than the recommended bitrate. So uh, I, I think this has to do with uh, the, the content you're setting. So it's, it's nothing to alarm or be alarmed about. It's just, uh, depend, it depends on what you're sending at the time. It might be minimal data and, and automatically you're gonna get that, uh, that warning, but it's, it's nothing that, uh, that's cause for concern. So how about we move over to uh, like a side-by-side -side video now of what what the what a stream would look like from this box. So let's uh, let's just um, go back to a video. I'm gonna load this video up in a second in a side-by-side -side window. This is a video captured uh, on a train from work one day in uh, downtown Toronto. So let's pull up that side-by-side uh, -side window now. That that little uh, echo you heard is is the audio from the RS RTSP stream. I'm just going to mute that for a second. So here I have a uh, 1080p video playing on the left. It's my extended desktop. And on the right is the RST, RTSP stream coming from the box itself. And, and as you can see, the watermarking that I set up earlier with welcome to the 2020 conference and that uh, BMP image I was talking about, which has a, a transparency or is it opacity setting of 100? Now you might notice some some minute pauses in between. That that has to do with my computer, because I'm trying to do video editing, recording, streaming, all at the same time. So it's it's uh, it's really working the PC. The actual stream, if you were to look at it from a monitor, uh, or uh, 
not a monitor from another PC actually you you wouldn't really be seeing those um, pauses it'll it's it's a smooth flow coming from the unit so I want to switch over to the audio output of the box to give you an idea of what the voiceover would be if, if you would be uh, using it in that manner so I'm just gonna mute my main audio check check okay so this is this is the audio <laughs> there's a there's a 1.5 second delay and so I'm hearing my voice I'm hearing my voice back in my head and it's a little awkward but this is what it sounds like from the RTSP stream so let me uh, play that video again okay here we go check check one two one two one two checking for audio dropouts one two three four five six seven eight nine ten well folks uh, thank you for watching I hope this video has been helpful or will be helpful in some way or the other uh, in your purchasing decisions if you're considering this unit thank you